Hey, what's going down, Sec Plus Preppers? These are the IT Dojo Security Plus questions of the day. I'm Colin Weaver. Get you two questions every single day. Ponder and contemplate. Let's go ahead and get right in it. All right, here comes question number one. Uh, you work for a company that sometimes rents out its conference rooms and uh, internet connectivity is not part of the rental agreement when you do that. Now, you've been informed that people who are renting the conference rooms have been coming in and connecting to the available wall jacks that actually are getting them connected and providing them with internet connectivity. So, my question to you is, is how can you prevent them from going in and doing that while still allowing legitimate users to be able to go into that conference room, plug in and gain internet connectivity? You got a bunch of answer choices right there. Go ahead and click pause, give them a read, and when you're ready, click play. We can talk about what's what. All right, here we go. First choice on the list says implement an intrusion prevention system. While an IPS being implemented sounds like a great idea, uh, it is not going to help you in this particular circumstance. It would tell you that somebody is connected to your network and maybe transmitting data that you didn't want to have transmitted, but it's not going to stop them from doing that, at least not in the context that we need to talk about right here. Option number two says turn on Mac filtering on the ports. Now, this is plausible, however, it's not a great solution. You could go in and create some sort of an exhaustive list of MAC addresses that are allowed to be on these ports, but you'd go insane trying to keep up to date and on track with all the different MAC addresses that might come into this uh, conference room from the different computers in your organization. So, no, it's just, it's, it's not gonna work for you, not in a scalable kind of way. If you had three computers in your office or something like that, then I'd tell you to rock it out. But if this is a case where you've got you know, potentially dozens or hundreds of computers and those things change across time, trying to go in and control access using Mac filtering on something as arbitrary as a port in a conference room uh, is an exercise in futility. So I don't recommend doing that. So this is not the answer that we're looking for. Choice number three says configure firewall rules, denying the appropriate IP address ranges. Uh, yeah, but then what happens when a legitimate user comes in and connects? They're going to be in that same IP address range and then they would be denied as well. So still not what we're looking for. Uh, that's not going to be a good solution for us. Next option on the list says you could go in and disable DHCP support for that particular network segment. Well, this would work against a non-savvy attacker. It's also going to screw up your legitimate users. So a legitimate user in your organization is accustomed to being able to come into the office, be connected simply by plugging into an appropriate port or connecting to a wireless LAN, they get an IP address and off they go, puttering about the internet and doing what they do. Now suddenly when they go into this conference room, there's no DHCP support and they're going to have to go in and statically configure their IP addresses in their computers. Um, one, they probably don't have the rights to do that. Uh, and two, they probably wouldn't know to do that or even how to do that. So that's not really going to be a solution that's going to work out for you either. So I don't recommend doing this at all. And finally, we come to the right answer, which is for you to go in on the switch that this wall jack leads to, enable 802.1x authentication, or 802.1x with EAP, and uh, then go in and configure user and or machine authentication for the devices that plug into that. This is gonna allow legitimate devices in your network to be able to connect while preventing those illegitimate devices, those people who are renting the conference room from being able to get onto your network. So that is the best solution of the choices that are presented here. All right, here comes question number two today. You need to cre increase the availability of your company's web app. Uh, which of the following is going to be the best solution for going in and doing that? Now, your answer choice is right there. Click pause if you need to. When you're ready, click play and we'll break them all down. Choice number one on the list says you should implement TLS. Uh, no. That's going to make the connections confidential. The data is going to be secret as it passes back and forth, but that's not going to do anything to help you with the uh, reliability and availability of the web app. So negative on TLS. Option number two says, why don't you move the database that supports the web app to a different physical server? Um, while that may certainly be a very common thing to do and could certainly improve the overall performance and potentially the security of your system, it's not going to do anything really to help you with the availability of the resources. So that's not the answer that we're looking for right here either. Choice number three, it's getting a little warmer here. It says that you should go in and implement multiple instances of your web app and then go in and configure round robin DNS to simply spread the load between the different three. Now, this is not the right answer because it's not the best solution, although it is a solution. 
if you were to go in and have multiple IP addresses that resolve to the same host name in DNS and then configure round robin in your DNS implementation, you could have, as people come in and ask for resolution, you could have them return the IP addresses of the different web app instances and then send those people to those respective instances for doing that. There's all sorts of issues that are beyond the scope of this question that you would you could potentially run into with doing this. So even though it is potentially a solution, it is not going to be the best solution as the other answer choices are going to reveal. So let's keep going. This next choice, that's what we're looking for. In this choice, we're saying we're going to go in and implement a load balancer with multiple instances of our web app behind it. The load balancer, depending upon who's, which, whether you use a hardware load balancer or a software load balancer like Nginx or something like that, um, is going to give you all kinds of creative opportunities to go in and direct that traffic going through the load balancer to the number of instances of the web app that you have on the back side. Now, you can do it in a round robin type fashion. You can do hash based stuff in order to have persistence of connections. Um, if people are doing things that require persistence on a particular server, um, uh, there's, there's all kinds of little nifty things that you can do. And the, ben the other benefit of this too is that if somebody drops off, uh, needs to be taken down for maintenance or has some other kind of an issue, one of your web app instances does, uh, then the load balancer can you know, account for that and keep the app up and available because it's got the other instances to which it can forward the traffic and allow people to you know, not notice that anything has changed on the back end for this. So very much so, the availability question is going to be frequently answered by using a load balancer and, um, and, and going in and doing this type of a solution. And then the final choice on the list is to enable client-side web caching. Uh, that, no, it's, it's not going to help you. Uh, not, not for this kind of stuff. You can get some stuff in improvements in performance and speed for websites if you cache some stuff locally, but in terms of actually trying to make sure that you uh, increase the availability of your web app, client-side caching isn't going to be your benefit. All right, two more questions done. First question today was on how are you going to keep unauthorized people from uh, renting out a conference room and connecting to your company network through the available wall jacks that are in there? Uh, and the answer was 802.1x with the AP. And then the second question was, um, how are you going to go in and have multiple instances of a web app and maintain high availability or implement high availability in those situations? So I hope you dug these questions. I hope they help you as you continue to prepare for your exam. Uh, please click the like button if you dug these questions. And also come back tomorrow because I do these questions every single day. And oh yeah, I forgot. Subscribe. Peace. See you tomorrow.